Welcome to the tutorial on sequential circuit design using FPGA. FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Arrays and we have already seen one of the tutorials on a FPGA. So in continuation here we will see how a sequential circuit design can be obtained using a FPGA. So a little bit in order to brush up what we have seen earlier. An FPGA usually consists of an array of configurable logic blocks which were called as CLBs if you can recall that is this one which was surrounded by a ring of input output blocks. So the FPGA may also contain other components such as memory blocks, clock generators, tri-state buffers etc. So a typical CLB will contain two or more function generators often referred to as the lookup tables or LUTs. Then you also have the programmable multiplexes, DC flip-flops and the IO blocks usually contain additional flip-flops for storing the inputs or outputs and tri-state buffers for driving the input output pins. So here is a simplified block diagram for a Xilinx Vertex or Spartan T CLB and this CLB is divided into nearly identical slices as you can clearly see. Each slice contains four variable function generators or LU LUTs. So along with that you have two DC flip-flop and an additional logic for carry and control. This additional logic usually includes the muxes for selecting the flip-flop inputs and for multiplexing the LUT outputs to form functions of five or more variables. Next we have the FPGA implementation of the Mealy machine. So this Mealy sequential machine that you see here has two inputs which are denoted here, two outputs Z1, Z2 and two flip-flops and these two flip-flops can be implemented by the FPGA. The four LUTs that is FGs or function generators are required. So you can see there are four function generators and two will generate the D inputs to the flip-flop and the two will generate the Z outputs. The flip-flop output is fed back to the CLB inputs via the interconnection external to the CLB. The entire circuit will fit into one vertex CLB and this implementation works because each D and Z is a function of only four variables that is X1 x2, q1 and q2. If more flip-flops or inputs are needed, the d and the z or d or z functions may have to be decomposed to use additional function generators. So next we have the implementation of the shift register. In this case, we will consider the FPGA implementation of the parallel in parallel out shift register. So kindly refer to the tutorial on parallel in parallel out shift register because you need to understand how that functions and how that implementation has been used here. So here we will make use of four LUTs or function generators to generate the D inputs to the flip-flops and 
you have a fifth LUT or a fifth function generator that is being used to generate the CE input. If we had implemented the equations of the parallel in parallel out shift register directly without making use of C input we would need to implement four five variable functions so this would require eight LUTs because each five variable function requires two four variable function generators however if we set uh, C E to be equal to L D plus S H then we can say C E is equal to 0 when L D equal to S H is equal to 0 and the flip flops will hold their current values therefore we need not use the first term in the equations of the shift register and the flip flop D input equations will fit into the four variable function generators. Now if we are to rewrite the equations of the shift register that is parallel in parallel out shift register then we can write the equations as Q3 plus to be equal to CE dash Q3 plus CE D 3 F that is equal to L D dash S H dash Q3 plus L D plus S H into S H dash D3 plus S H into S I. So this particular term that you see here D3 F this term D3 F corresponds to the D input to the flip flop 3. And the D input to Q3 is therefore written as SH dash D3 plus SH into SI which is a three variable function. So we can determine the other three flip flop D inputs in a similar way. So what we have basically done is the original equations of the parallel in parallel out shift register which have been specified here have been deduced in such a way that we can obtain the equation Q3 plus of this particular form so that it can be easily implemented using the FPGA. Next moving on to the 3 bit parallel adder with accumulator implementation using the FPGA. Again in this case you need to recall or look into the tutorial for parallel adder with accumulator I will be putting in the description box kindly go through so here we will try to implement that using the FPGA so each bit of the adder can be implemented with three variable function generators one for the sum and one for the carry the add signal that is present here can be connected to the CE input of each flip flop so that the sum is loaded by the rising clock edge when AD is equal to 1. So this particular arrangement of generating the carries is rather a slow process because the carry signal must uh, propagate through the function generator and its inter external interconnections for each bit. So because adders are frequently used in the FPGA, most FPGAs have uh, built-in fast carry logic in addition to the function.
function generators so if the fast carry logic is used the bottom row this entire bottom row of function generators uh, can be eliminated and a parallel adder with an accumulator can be implemented using only one function generator for each bit instead of making use of a total of six function generators for the implementation of three bit parallel adder with accumulator